That's a very fine, uh, fine pair of white shorts you got on there, Mark. Yeah, my working trotty whities. Well, what are you going to do now? Well, Michael would like to be baptised, so um, I've had to make a quick change. Rather, rather <laughs> in, in, than doing into, it in my jeans. Into, into your clean white shorts. Yeah, yeah. They, they are fresh. Um, where does a dog go when it dies? Up or down? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Huh, do you know? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. It's really great, Michael, you ought to be baptised into the Lord Jesus. And I always start off, it's a bit of a formality because we've had loads of chats. But I like to ask people, do you believe the things about the Kingdom of God and the Lord Jesus Christ? Oh, yes, I believe in the Bible and I believe Jesus died for our sins. So you get it, when you go under the water, it's like death with Jesus out of the water resurrection. From sin and, um, and on the uh, good possibility to fight against the uh, flesh and uh, be with the Spirit of God. Absolutely, that's what it is. Let's say, let's just start with a prayer. Um, Lord God, our Heavenly Father, through the Lord, we come to you and really thank you that again you have worked in the life of another man. And that you have brought him to believe in your Son and in your Word and in the glorious hope of, of your Kingdom. And we pray that you will bless Michael in every way. That you will fully cleanse him from his sin. That you will grant him your Spirit so that he might think in a spiritual way. And so that he might in the end be a more than conqueror through him that loved him. So that when the Lord returns, he will share in the Lord's resurrection and in the eternity of your kingdom. So please, please bless him. And please, as your dear son taught in his parable, please give him some talent, some gift, and help him to trade with that and to run with it and to have some good works that you set up for him to do from the foundation of the world and help him to do that and to serve you, to be a good soldier of your dear son, to run the race to the end. For the sake of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. So, you know, Paul says when you when you're baptized you go under the water, and that's death and resurrection of the Lord. And he, he gets this in Romans six. Um, he says it really clearly there. And you think therefore, what happened then when the Lord Jesus rose? Because when you come out of the swimming pool, that is like that's like the resurrection of Jesus. And when the Lord Jesus came out of the grave, it was early in the morning, first day of the week, everyone was going back to work. And there was no one standing there to shake hands with it. There was no Mark or Jesse or Duncan waiting there to shake hands, so nice job. Nobody. Come out of the grave, and there's Mary Magdalene, who come to anoint the body, and she thinks he's the gardener. And she says, hey there mister, what are you, what are you done with the body? Jesus is like, uh, Mary, oh wow, it's Jesus. My point is that he appeared like an ordinary working man, less like a gardener, even though he was the Son of God, who had now risen from the dead and all the angels of God were in glory and rejoicing because he'd risen from the dead, but he looked an ordinary guy, that's what I'm saying. And so it's the same really with you that and all of us, like, you got to go into the swimming pool, you're going to come out of it, and okay, there's Mark, Jesse and me to show down to you. But it seems so normal, there's a bloke who's with a snipper, cutting his lawn, there's another guy doing that, he's doing next door, it just seems so normal. And you're still going to be the same Michael, you're going to look the same, smell the same, appear the same, but with a huge difference, that you are now in the Lord Jesus, and He is working passionately in your life. There's another thing, Paul says that baptism is like going through the Red Sea. And you remember Israel, the slaves of Egypt? And they want it out, like all of us. We're in the world. We're in Egypt is like the world. We want out. And so he gave them that way. And they went through the Red Sea. There was water both sides of them. And there was the cloud on top of them. And he says that in that sense they were baptized. They had water both sides of them, the cloud was just water, that was on top of it. And so they were baptized in the cloud and in the sea. They came out of Egypt, went through the water, 
But I didn't come and leave this land with a promised land and the kingdom of God. They gave me to the desert. And I had to walk through the desert for 40 years. I hope you haven't got to go for 40 years. But um, God fed them every day with manna, bread. Which Jesus says is like, like the word of God. So I really encourage you to read every day. Go to the app, the Bible Companion on your phone. Read it every day. And there's a lot of books about the Bible. There's a lot of YouTubes and a lot of this, that, and the other. All well and good, but read the actual text of the Bible for yourself. Because Moses himself said that wilderness was a terrible place. There were dragons. There were sand pits. There was like quicksand. There was everything. But now we know the world. It's a terrible place. There's temptation here, there's, there's good sand over there. But we will get through it. But the problem is with Israel, that they said, no, nah, we want to go back. We want to go back to Egypt. Because it was better back there. Back in Egypt, their women were raped, their men were killed, their baby boys were killed, were, were drowned in the River Nile as soon as they were born. But they said, oh, it was better back then. But it wasn't. And, uh, we have a human tendency to think that the former days were better than these, that the past was better. Whereas in Christ, the past is bad. These are better days today, and my future is wonderful. I've got eternity ahead of me. So don't go back. One advantage of, you know, you're not a kid, right? You're an older guy. One advantage of that is that you know what's back there. We all know what's back there. And I want to go back to all that. So it's forward motion only. The heads are not skin. Yeah. Oh, well, Mark, if you want to add anything? <clears throat> well, this all words out of my mouth that, you know, yes, we go into the waters of baptism. And we're, we're in Christ. And it's that, I was saying earlier that in the life of Abraham, God brought Abraham out of the Ur of the Maltese. He was a Gentile Bible worshiper. God brought him out. It wasn't as if Abraham decided, you know, wake up one morning and thought, oh, I'm going to go and follow God. No, God intervened in his life and compelled him to come out. And yeah, Abraham did come out and he messed up here and he messed up there and created problems in his own life here and there. But one day, uh, God brought him out to look at the stars of heaven and say to him, Abraham, I've already told you I'm going to make you a, a great nation. I'm saying it again to you now, Abraham, look at those stars. Your, your seed, the Lord Jesus, is going to be a massive family. You're now going to be one of that family. You know, you're one of that contributing factor to the massive seed of the Lord Jesus. And then Abraham looked at it and it says that Abraham believed. That was a big call on Abraham's part. He, he had no children. And then he looked up there and he went, I can't believe. And for 10 seconds, 10 seconds, Abraham believed. Well, that's called faith. Abraham had faith, he had trust. For 10 seconds. And it says that God saw that. And he counted that 10 seconds to him. That's, that's the generosity of God, to see a man who believes, trusts, 10 seconds. And God counts that to people's righteousness. Our God is a generous God. He's a God of mercy, he's a, he's a father of mercy, he's a God of all time. So you've been blessed to be led by the Spirit. Led, we are led by the Spirit to baptism. Corinthians chapter 12 verse 13. It's not that necessarily the tongue of the eye uh, or others have led you to baptism. You no, know, it's the spirit that has compelled you to go this way. So the, the spirit of God and Jesus has touched your life. I congratulate you. Alright, let's have a prayer then and let's go let's go do it. Is there anything you'd like to say, Michael? Um there's nothing better than being in the kingdom of God. What else is there?
Mexican cars. Uh, are doing. Oh, who was it? Uh, uh, Mick Jagger. Oh, I can get no satisfaction because I try and I try and I try and I try. You look a bit like Mick Jagger. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, can't get no satisfaction in this one. You're right. Just turn the volume up on that one next time you play it, right? Uh, but here, here is satisfaction. Hey, I remember what uh, God says in Isaiah you know, right, that went as far as Jesus' death is concerned. He shall see the travail of his soul and be satisfied. So you see, God anticipated his son would be crucified. But God assured many, many years beforehand there will be fruit from that. We're not going to be one of those pieces of fruit. And Jesus will be satisfied. And this is what we want to do. We just want to bring satisfaction to, to God and his son. Yeah. Let's pray and let's go do it. We're going to pray more for it. Certainly. Lord God, our Heavenly Father and Lord Jesus, we thank you for giving us your Son, Heavenly Father, to be a light to this world, to actually show us what real satisfaction is. We are made in your image, Heavenly Father. And the Lord Jesus showed us those wonderful things of a man surrendering his whole life to you. We fain would be the Lord Jesus. We know that we are we are not him in completeness yet. We are slowly being changed from glory to glory. We thank you that you sent Jesus as a light to this world and that Michael and us have responded. We are so humble and feel so grateful to you that our future is assured. Keep Michael, we ask, in that way. Those that you have given to Jesus, please keep. Please keep him in Jesus. Let him wake up each morning and remember that you have actually intervened in his life. And he has responded. You have come out to meet Michael. Michael has come to meet you. And all this has been achieved through your son who we thank and praise you through at this time. Amen. Amen. Right, so then, Michael, you believe the things about the kingdom of God and the name of the Lord Jesus? Yeah. We're going to baptise you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah, I'm going to be here. back. Please, Brad. Oh. Oh, there we go. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Indeed, hallelujah. <laughs> God bless. Yeah, well done, mate. Heavenly Father, we really pray that you bless Michael and that you'll bring him through and uh, fill him with your spirit and bring him to the eternity of your kingdom and help him to glorify you and serve you and please you all the way there. For the Lord's sake. Amen. 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 And angels uh, are rejoicing in heaven. Yeah, there's a party going on. <laughs> Come on, oh, mate. Brother. <laughs>